Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and today we are going to be taking a closer look at the Bear Creek Arsenal budget-friendly AR-10 upper receiver. This has got to be the best affordable LR-308 upper that you can get because not only is it the least expensive, but it is 100% reliable and plenty accurate. So, if you want to learn more about this upper receiver, stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. Now, unfortunately, I gotta start off by saying that this upper receiver is currently sold out. It could be because of the holidays, or it could be because some YouTuber made a popular video on how to build an AR-308 for less than $500. Who's to say? But the bottom line is, at least a few weeks ago, you could get this thing for $259. And if you don't think that that's already an amazing value, that includes the bolt carrier group and charging handle. These days, it's hard to find a standard AR-15 upper receiver with bolt carrier group and charging handle for that price, much less an AR-308. Now, unfortunately, they're sold out of upper receivers at this price point, but for just $20 more, they do have a version that has a side charging upper receiver. That's a really cool feature. And then if you wanna step it up to about $300, then you get into the 18 inch and 20 inch barrels and they're available in both side charging and standard AR upper receivers. The craziest thing about it is that I, I just can't see how they're making money on this at that price point. Like I said, these AR-308 uppers are coming in cheaper than standard AR-556 upper receivers, which makes it possible for you to build an awesome AR-308 for under $500. Let's go over the specs of this upper receiver real quick. Now, I mentioned in my previous video that what I wanted to build wasn't necessarily a long range tack driver. What I wanted was something that's good for medium range and heavy rate of fire. So I chose an upper that has a 16 inch heavy barrel. Okay, that's important because if I'm gonna be doing rapid fire with it, I want something that can handle that heat without drifting the point of aim. This barrel is parkerized and it features a one in 10 twist rate. It also has a mid-length gas system, which again is perfect for a 16 inch barrel. That's going to ensure that this thing cycles reliably without being over gassed, which let's go ahead and talk about my first range report the reliability test. When I took this out shooting for the first time, this thing handled everything I threw at it with 100% reliability, including a mag dump of tool ammo. Now, full disclosure, when I was building this thing before I took it out to shoot, I did some tips and tricks that I've done on all my AR builds to ensure 100% reliability right out of the box. Now, I'm not gonna say that this upper receiver truly needed that in order to function reliably. What I am gonna say is it certainly didn't hurt. So if you wanna know some tips and tricks on how to get your AR to function with 100% reliability out of the box, definitely check out that video. But I originally thought when I was shooting this thing, man, in order for it to be functioning so reliably, they likely overgassed it. But when I reviewed the footage later on, looking at the trajectory of the brass casings, this thing is actually perfectly gassed and perfectly timed. That's really impressive at this price point. If it is overgassed, it's just a tad bit to ensure that it continues to cycle reliably once it starts getting a little bit dirty. Now, because this is a 308 upper receiver and not a 556 or 223 upper receiver, I'm gonna be putting a lot less rounds down range per range trip, so I doubt that I will ever get to a point where this thing will be so dirty it can't cycle. This upper receiver also includes a full length 15 inch M-lock handguard and it's really awesome. Obviously great for mounting bipod and backup BUA sights. These are cheap Fiaci BUA sights and they've been absolutely awesome for $25. They've held zero, they adjust really easily. They don't flip up when I don't want them to. I'm definitely gonna be doing a video on the best budget BUA sights and this is definitely gonna be one on them. I've got a few more to test before that video comes out. So be looking for that video in January. Again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Now the upper receiver itself is built to mate with DPMS pattern LR308 lower receivers. And the upper receiver that Bear Creek Arsenal recommended to me when I got this upper was an Aero Precision M5 lower receiver. And that's one of the reasons why this build actually came out to about $520 instead of less than 500, is because I went with a higher quality Aero Precision lower receiver for maximum compatibility. And the fit between this upper receiver is amazing. There is like no slop whatsoever. I mean, you can hardly see a ray of sunshine between the upper and lower receivers. They just made up beautifully. So it's not only affordable in that it's cheaper than most AR-15 upper receivers in general, it's also 100% reliable. What more do you want? Accuracy? Well, let's have a look at our second range trip. All right, so we're gonna do an accuracy test of this Bear Creek Arsenal 308 upper. And before we do it, I'm just gonna remind you real quick, this is not a match grade upper receiver, first and foremost. I'm not using a match grade fire control group. This is just a mil-spec trigger group. 
and we're using a Vortex Crossfire optic. This is a budget-friendly optic. It's a wonderful optic for only 150 bucks. Um, and then yeah, I can't find match grade ammo anywhere to save my life. So we're not gonna be using match grade ammo either. So I'm just saying, I want you guys to have realistic expectations with this, but we're shooting at 100 yards. And first up, I'm going to use some PMC bronze. This stuff is kind of my go-to for just a reliable quality ammo. And we'll see how this thing likes it. Cool. Let's go have a look. All right, that's a pretty good grouping right there. I got two in the same hole. And uh, so this right here is our PMC bronze group. And we are looking at less than two MOA, I would say. Three out of five within one MOA, that, that's pretty good. I like that PMC bronze. Let's see what else we can do. All right, next up, we're gonna use some M80 military surplus ammo. I got this stuff from JNG Sales. They sell it in like a 200 round fresh fire pack. I actually got all this ammo at JNG Sales. How many was that? That's five, right? Actually, yeah. I only, I only yeah. see four. We may have already shot five. We'll have to review the footage. I might have loaded an extra one on accident, but just in case, we'll go ahead and throw a sixth one down there. All right, so which group do we want to count? <laughs> so I did do six shots. We got two that are really close to my point of aim, which is right here. And then we got a, another tight group out here, but overall, not so great. In addition to all the non-match grade components and ammo that we're using, I'm also not shooting from a bench with a sled. I'm shooting from the ground with a bipod. So there's that factor to take into as well, but not so happy with this group. So uh, let's try out some different ammo. All right, next up, we got Federal Power Shock, 150 grain ammo. All right, that is a good looking group. Let's go check it out. That's pretty good group, even for match grade ammo from a sled. That's probably like 1.2, 1.3 MOA. That's with the Federal. And of course, if we were gonna look at just the tightest three shot group, Definitely sub MOA. That's wonderful. All right, next up we got Winchester PowerPoint Deer, Antelope, and Wild Boar ammo. And this is 150 grain as well. It's starting to hurt my collarbone, I'm shooting prone. Don't have much meat up there to absorb the recoil. All right, I flinched on that last one, so it might be a flyer. My arm's starting to get kind of sore. Well, that is also a very good looking group. I would say this one's probably, looks like probably about two MOA. Um, but if you look at this three shot group, it's like half MOA. That's amazing. So this is the Winchester. And uh, I know that I flinched on that last shot because I have a really bony collarbone. So laying prone is not super comfortable, even with an AR-10. Shooting standing up, much more comfortable. It doesn't bother me nearly as much. All right, and last up, I debated even wanting to do this because my shoulder's already sore from laying prone, but uh, this thing ran so well on tool ammo in my reliability test that I just for kicks want to see what it could do at 100 yards. So we'll go ahead and try a five shot group of tool ammo. This should be quite comical. If those first two rounds are any indication of the rest of the five, it's actually going to be pretty good. Okay, so, so far this is the tightest looking group that I've shot. <laughs> I pulled that one. All right. Actually, it looks very promising. Let's check it out. It's really not bad. Five shots right there with the tool ammo. And these were my first three shots. Look at that. I guess it's always good to know that you have a rifle that runs well on tool ammo. I honestly did not expect that. That is pretty killer. So just a quick recap for those of you that might have trouble following along. We have a nothing special cheapest AR-308 upper receiver you can get, a nothing special mil-spec fire control group, a nothing special vortex bottom of the line optic, a nothing special shooter, and nothing special ammo. And yet somehow we got some really good looking groupings, okay? Obviously the M80 grouping is trash, okay? It's like a three to three and a half MOA, which is actually worse than the target group they sent with my 
upper receiver when they tested it with silver bear steel cased ammo. But if you look at the Federal Winchester and tool ammo, we have about a 1.5 MOA accuracy amongst a five shot group. Now, if we only look at the closest three, we have sub MOA with all three ammo types, even tool ammo. Now, of course, in order to count that three shot group, we have to discount one as a flyer for not using match grade ammo and discount another flyer for not using match grade shooter. You guys can tell me if that's fair or not. What I'm trying to tell you guys is if you put in a match grade trigger, a match grade optic and match grade ammo, and you shot it from a bench with a vice, I really truly think you could get sub MOA accuracy with this thing. But like I said, it wasn't the purpose for me building this particular rifle. And the fact that I could get that out of this is really just icing on the cake. Now do me a favor. If you guys happen to make your way over to the Bear Creek Arsenal website and you look at their upper receivers they have in stock, uh, not necessarily just the 308 uppers, but any uppers, if you see one that you'd like me to review, let me know because being pretty much the only budget-friendly firearms channel, I am 100% stoked on Bear Creek Arsenal now, and I am very excited to try more of their products. So let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see, and I'll see what I could do about getting my hands on it to test and review it for you. Be sure you stick around the channel because I've got an AR-15 Dissipator upper receiver to review from Palmetto State Armory, not to mention my video on the best backup iron sights. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in those videos.